Hello. So I know I've touched on this issue before, but um, I think it's worth reiterating because it's uh, still very much in the um, public domain. At least a um, big segment of the media wanted to continue going as a as a movement, as a um, debate vocal point. And I think there are a lot of valid issues to debate and discuss, and there are valid concerns to bring up. I'm talking about the Me Too movement. Um, so the BBC has a series now called 100 Women, and the big thing they're covering now is the Me Too movement. Um, I, I've looked at it on and off, and it's just seems to be incredibly one-sided. It seems to be... Um, the perspective of women and and some men as well who are accusers but there's no sort of caveat there's no voice from people who are saying wait a second how far is this me too thing going um and i'll be quite honest i have serious reservations about the way to the way me too is going but i want to make a few disclaimers before i get into that Number one, uh, I'm not someone who says, oh, all these women are this, that and the other, and why are they only coming forward now? I think there is valid reasons why women and men in some cases wait for years before they uh, make accusations. And a large part of it is because the abusers are often in very powerful positions. So naturally, if someone is, you know, um, an up and coming young actor, and they're going up against a big, powerful producer in, in Hollywood, for example. Uh, I mean, Hollywood's been particularly targeted by this, but it's been in other um, institutions as well. In the British Parliament has been affected by it, uh, and American politics as well. So from that point of view, that's a clear reason why people um, didn't come forward sooner, because they weren't believed. And they were dismissed. Um, their their allegations were dismissed, and they were told basically. I and mean, we know from the Jimmy Savile thing in the UK that a lot of young victims of Jimmy Savile were basically told to shut up, and you know don't spirate that uh, that man because he's great for the BBC. So um, when we're looking at this, we need to understand that when some women came forward, uh, that gave confidence to others. I think there is definitely that dynamic there. However, I am also very troubled by this tendency that we're seeing now that every time a man is accused, accused, then the media pretty much endorses the view that he is guilty. They'll be careful about it. They won't say he is guilty because that would be libelous, but they, um, they essentially say, uh, so and so is accused, and he's a piece of dirt. But he, we have to stress that he's accused. And I think that it, what we're seeing is basically trial by media, and I find that very disturbing. Um, I mean, we're seeing a situation where men are being um, punished already. What I mean by that is they're being dropped from productions. In the case of actors, um, you know, their name is basically being blacklisted. Uh, so that anyone who even associates with them has to keep a kind of distance. So they're being marginalised before they have even been tried in a court of law. I think that's wrong. I think that the way forward with this is if someone is accused of um, sexual harassment or um, more serious accusations like rape, then um, they should have due process. They should be arrested on suspicion of that and face their day in court. And all the evidence needs to be brought forward. But this situation of people being accused and they get their name dragged through the mud, plastered all over the media, and then it's kind of held up, oh, this is another example of a powerful man is, who's abused his position, except that it's not. It's another example of an accusation and what I find troubling is, since, since when did accusation become guilt? Since when did accusation mean this person is guilty? Now, some of them will be guilty. But I just find it chilling how one-sided this campaign is. 
I mean, okay, that's their that's their cause. They're obviously going to be one sided, but the media has been shamefully one sided in how it's dealt with this. It is basically saying all the accusations that Me Too makes must be true. Um, they'll say that you know they'll say accusations to cover themselves, but it's very clear that their sympathies are with the guilt by by accusation narrative. Um, I've, I'm not saying that the people making accusations are lying. I don't think that's the case. I do think there, are, in some cases, there's no smoke without fire. I mean, Harvey Weinstein, um, I think, you know, there's an overwhelming amount of evidence against him, uh, audio recordings and a range of other things. Um, and, you know, in the case of Weinstein, it's not just one accusation, it's many. So I personally don't, that's my gut feeling. I don't know either way. But I do think that he, um, as an American citizen, deserves to stay in court. And I just find it deeply troubling that, I mean, feminists don't care about innocent men potentially being, uh, you know, caught up. They just want to push the agenda that all women are victims and all powerful men are pigs. Um, I'm talking about hardline feminists. I'm not talking about all feminists. But the problem with me, too, is it's... Um, I think it's irresponsible in the way it's going about things by saying, oh, we must believe women. Well, I think that if a woman is making these claims, she should be treated with sympathetically. The police should definitely treat her with sympathy. She should be listened to, or a man for that matter. There have been some men also um, making accusations. You know, people in that situation, they need to be listened to. Their, their um, claims need to be taken seriously. And there cannot be a situation that anybody is above the law, whoever they are, no matter how powerful they are. So from that point of view, I would say Me Too has been a good thing because it's kind of reminded people that there shouldn't be a situation where someone is untouchable. On the other hand, I find it very troubling that we have the situation whereby I mean, so many men have been accused now. And it's a case of either there is massive corruption going on and all these guys are guilty or some of them are guilty. And in other cases, frankly, there may be accusers trying to settle old scores. Maybe they didn't get a part. Maybe they've got some grievance for another reason. I'm not saying that is that is the standard situation. I'm saying it's not implausible that that might be um, the situation in some cases. I mean, I take a very dim view of these powerful actresses who are coming out and, you know, they're saying that Weinstein is the devil and uh, they're pontificating about how awful these men are. And yet there is photographs showing them daffing their heads off, completely embracing the likes of Harvey Weinstein. Now, that to me does not look like women who are intimidated or, you know, being bullied into um, the casting couch, so to speak. I, I think it definitely could be the case with young actresses who were in a position of vulnerability. But these powerful, established actresses who are now pontificating about it when they done nothing at the time. I mean, if they knew about it, I just think that's a height of hypocrisy. But, you know, Hollywood's very often hypocritical in this sense. Um, so I think the best way forward is that Me Too has been important insofar as saying that there is a problem here and it's a problem that maybe wasn't spoken about before and that was wrong. So, you know, I think it, I'd compare it to the Black Lives Matter movement. Black Lives Matter had very legitimate concerns about police brutality, about police killings. But then it kind of got into this thing of black versus white and it started start playing the most divisive sort of identity politics. Um, and it totally failed to take into account black thugs who are terrorizing cities like Chicago and black gang members who, you know, the hypocrisy of that. So I'm not saying it's the same situation, but me too. I think in some ways has went too far. I mean, are we saying, for example, that if a man has put his hand on a woman's knee and they laugh about it, I mean, this was the case in Britain, 
um, involving a politician and a journalist, and both didn't see it as a big thing. The journalist herself said that she didn't care about it, but me too made it a big issue. Um, there was one case, at least one case in Wales, where um, a politician took his own life after accusations. Now, you can read the end of that either way, that he took his own life out of guilt and he didn't want to face justice, or he could have been an innocent man falsely accused. So that is what I find troubling about this. Those who are being accused, you know, if they're guilty, they should face justice, particularly for the more serious things like uh, sexual harassment and, and rape. But I think that Me Too has went too far in some ways because we're now in a situation whereby men are being shamed for everything. I mean, I think there's going to be a situation where it's going to change the whole dynamics of male-female interaction, whereby, you know that traditional thing whereby a man gets an award, he goes up and he kisses the hostess, but it's very, it's done in a very sort of professional, if you can use that word, hands off sort of way. It's just the convention. I think actors are going to think carefully about that because they don't want to be accused of harassing her. Um, I mean, this is going to sound like almost a flippant point, but are we going to see a situation where romance scenes and films are completely diluted? Um, because the whole idea of flirtation is now toxic. And what implications does this have, for example, the, there's a convention that a man makes the first move. Are men now going to be in a situation where they're reluctant? I mean, I'm not just talking about famous, powerful men. I'm talking about men in general. Are men going to be in a situation where they don't go up to an attractive girl in a bar and offer to buy her a drink because they're worried that, um, oh, well, I'm going to be accused of harassing her? That's my concern about where Me Too could go. And I know feminists don't care about that. They'll say, oh, well, it's a bit of inconvenience for men, so what? But I think these are serious questions about the impl uh, implications this is going to have on society. The way I see it is I've no sympathy for men who abuse their position and do make women feel uncomfortable. I mean, you know, as a man, I fully condemn that. I think it's wrong. And when a woman is clearly uncomfortable, you stop. No excuses. But... I also think Me Too has went too far, whereby mm. it's basically become something of a witch hunt, whereby if a man is accused of something, then he must be guilty. And I've got female friends who have also said this, so I don't think this is a male versus female thing. I think a lot of women don't like the way Me Too is going. I think that there is no smoke without fire in some cases. Okay, so put those men in the court of law, and if they're guilty, then they should be punished. But this situation where men are simply being accused left, right and centre and the media then don't show both sides, they're basically like so-and-so is accused and we'll use that word accused because we want to cover ourselves, but we're still going to vilify him and treat it like, oh, this is another example of a man abusing his position. No, it's another example of a man being accused. There's a difference. That's what I find so troubling about the way Me Too has gone because it's taking accusations as equating to guilt. Now, that surely is not progressive. It won't help victims, because if innocent men are implicated, then it will mean that the guilty men get away with it, because then, um, you know, people will then start to feel sorry for all those accused, and some of them may well be guilty. So... The way I see it is it's it's just sort of down to common sense. Men shouldn't make women uncomfortable. Um, and some powerful women for that matter as well. You know, this this applies both ways. If you have a powerful woman, woman and, you know, she has a so-called toy boy, like a young actor who's maybe good looking, looking something like this. Um, okay, it might not be as common, but I don't think it's completely non-existent. Um, it just comes down to mutual respect. But there has to be due process. And we cannot have this situation where there is basically trial by media. The likes of CNN and the BBC, the way they've reported this over the last two years has been so grossly one-sided that how can these men get a fair trial when they're basically being vilified before they're even in court? 
that I find troubling. I am not saying that they're innocent. I'm just saying that trial by media cannot be a fair trial.